Welcome back to the channel guys, it's your boy JT and in today's video, we're getting ready to jump all over this vector scope. Hey guys, hey, we're in this vector scope. Look, I want to welcome you back to the channel. And uh, if you're new here, please consider subscribing. I promise you, I'm going to bring some added value to you and your content creation. Right now, we're getting ready to jump into probably what has become another one of my favorites. And when I say has become another one of my favorites, it is, it's become a scope that is not intimidating because now I have a pretty thorough uh, understanding of it. You know, initially when I first started, it was like, oh my God, I need to get the skin tones on this, on this, on this trace line here, right here on the skin line indicator. It was like, what in the world does that mean? <laughs> but so this is what we're going to do. We're going to go through the vector scope and i'm going to kind of help you to really get a good understanding of it so now the vector scope is something that measures color and saturation all right um really just kind of think of it like a color wheel you've got your primary colors which are red green and blue and wait one moment let me let me make sure that this Okay, there we go. I had to make sure that you could see my mouse. All right, so you've got red, you've got green, and you've got blue. Then you have yellow, magenta, and cyan. All right, um, we'll come over here first to the settings. You know, you can you can either you can combine, say like your extents or your lows, your uh, your mids, your highs, um, and this is just like I said, kind of messing around with the uh, with the actual. Let me see here. Yeah, this is just kind of messing around with the actual settings or whatever. Again, you can't break it. Click on it. See what it does. Um, and I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go colorize so that I can be able to see the actual colors that are showing up whenever I am. Uh, you know, whenever I am in here doing some edits. Okay. Same deal. You know, we can come here. We can make the trace a little bit stronger in terms of what we see on the actual graph. Or we can bring it down some the, the more over here that you do that it gets to be a little harder to see the fine details of it. so i like to keep it probably about here on my vector scope because one of the main things i want to see is if i'm actually uh sampling out skin tone i can follow this follow this skin tone line indicator right here in the middle and you can turn that on or off right here by going to skin tone uh uh, show skin tone indicator i typically leave it on there you can also do a two time zoom i don't i usually leave it on just standard anyway okay so now um when you're looking at the vector scope you can see what the colors are because parts of the trace are going to show you what those actual colors are like you can see some blue here because we've got some we've got some blue that's kind of coming in from this side uh, but what you mainly see is a lot is orange notice is not going towards the red it's not going towards the yellow but it's actually on orange kind of the same way it would fall uh, if you were looking at a color wheel now these are your color targets right here um, anything past we're gonna say like the center point of each one of these would make your image, um, it would take it out of compliance for being broadcast safe because you wanna be able to hit within that area that would allow you to be able to put your content basically on any kind of a medium. You know, yeah, you can do social media and web, but you did not have to, not have to have those constraints, but when you get ready to go say network TV uh, or film or any other kind of major broadcast, they wanna make sure that your images are falling within the standard, the standard of colors that they'll be able to use. So um, again, let's just click on a few images and kind of see what our readouts are. So we can see here that there's a, there's a much more saturated blue over here, which would be a strong indication as to here. We can also see uh, more orange over here, which I'm going to say is, is in alignment with the skin tone of the subject here. And you can even see a little red, which I'm going to probably say is coming from over here where there's something that's red back there. All right. Um, let's click on this one. Okay. So same deal. Um, we've got more is we've got more going towards the yellow we do have some blue that's over here i'm going to imagine that that's probably some of the sky 
uh, the sky detail. Then we also have a little orange. I'm going to say it's probably a combination of skin tone and sun that we can see because it's a it's a sunny day. Um, let's click on one of mine. All right. So we can see here. I mean, it looks pretty neutral for the most part. You know, we've got this right here that's going right on the uh, skin tone line indicator. And then we also have some more orange. And I'm going to probably say that that's probably this lamp back here behind me. Okay, so this is how you would read the uh, the vector scope. Now, from here in the center, that's where you're going to be basically a pure white. But as you begin, as your trace begins to go out here, that's when you begin to see more of those colors that are present in your scene. So let's do this. For this one, let's just add an, add a quick note, and then I'll just say color, just so we can you know have something to identify. Now, I'm just going to crank up the saturation real quick. Watch this. Okay. So you can see how it begins to show not only more of the uh, the color that you have in there, but it also lets you know if you're oversaturated. You see how this part of trace is going, is going up this way, too far up that way. And it also is not on the skin tone line indicator right here as well. So that wouldn't be a good deal. Um, Okay, let's come over here to the next one. Let's just find, tell you what, I'm going to come right here and I'm going to add another node and we'll call it color, color two in this case. And then let's crank up our saturation over here. Let's see what colors pop out. All right. So you can see the more, the more we turn that saturation up, you know, it's, it's taking our image now into a level where it wouldn't be safe for broadcast. You can see that orange is definitely not the way that that orange looked. It's highly oversaturated. And you can also see more of the blue. And those are really kind of the only two colors that are in there. You can, you can see some of the reddish or pinkish. And this little red right here is actually beginning to push the trace a little bit more towards this red. Now, we haven't gone over curves yet, but curves would be a way, well, one of the ways that you could actually go in and fix this image. You know, let's say you've got your saturation levels the way you want them and you've got your exposure the way you want, but there are individual colors that you want to be able to make adjustments to. Like, if we wanted to change the hue of the orange in that dress or the hue of the pink in her dress uh, here, we could use our curves and we could be able to pull some of that color out. But right here, we're just, just resetting the saturation is gonna help us to take care of that. So now we've got a much, we've got a much more realistic um, picture of what that orange dress actually looked like. But we can, we can increase it. So, and I'll just do this just, just to kind of show you real quick. Let me go back. What I did was I clicked on my curves button and then I come over here and say, here is the, this right here is the hue curve. So if I wanted to change this orange, when I click on it with the eyedropper, it's going to place that, it's going to place that right here on the curve. And I can either change the orange on that and make it a different color. Either way, you see that? I can do that. Okay. And then, you know, and we'll get into this in a lot more detail, but if I want to include more than just the orange color and I want to, you know, start coming over here into some of the yellow, then it's going to select even more of that dress as it begins to kind of, you know, uh, I'm going to say gradient out or if there are any yellow tones or highlights in it, it'll be able to do even more or include even more color. You see that? So that's one of the that's kind of one of the ways you can use that. But you can but look at our vector graph. You see how if I want to push that a little more towards red, you see how our vector graph is changing. See, I'm, I'm adding more red. And so it's going over more towards the red because it's adding more red into the dress. But now if I want to take some of that out and be as I begin to go over more yellow, you see how that vector that vector scope is pointing towards the yellow. And when you get about right there, that's like almost going to the very center of that, that color target box. Okay. Um, and that's how you can do that. We can do the same thing for the pink in her, in her dress. Let's see if we can click that. There we go. All right. So now we've just included the pink in there and we can add pink. So if you look at it, you kind of can't see it. Let's see if we can get a little more pink in there. OK, 
Okay, yeah, we, we've already dipped it down good. Let's see, okay, right there. All right, so right there. You know, we've come in, we've taken, we've removed some of that out. But now look at that. You see how it's changing as well? And look at how the colors beginning to appear on here. We're between the magenta and blue, which would be, uh, well, between the red, magenta, and blue. So now we're kind of going over into that purple spectrum. Okay, you can move this over here just like this or just like that. But that's how, so this is, you have a lot of power with this vector scope. I like to use it more for analyzation than anything. Um, if I do need to make some color corrections or changes in there, I will use this to make sure that those colors that I'm adding are not too saturated. Like for example, let's come back over and, uh, and, and add a little more of this, okay? But I'm gonna click on this saturation curve. You can see here where it says hue versus set. This is the second one. This is the hue, this is the sat, this is the lumen. All right, so we're gonna go back to saturation. So now if I come here and click on that, if I begin to increase that up, you see how it begins to punch past that? Now that yellow dress is taking on a whole different level of saturation and it's oversaturated. But I can also come here and pull down and you see how we can use our vector scope. See, we can get the, the perfect yellow and the perfect saturation we want. If we don't want a color dominating in our image, we can use the vector scope to be able to measure just how we can how we can do it. And you can do that for saturation, luminance, uh, and the hue. Um, and there's a few other, like I said, we're gonna get into detail on how to use the curves in the venture result. Now, watch this. Remember what I said you can do, right? We can reset it all. <laughs> let's reset saturation. It is going to reset the hue. And now we're right back. So we, you forgot those colors even existed, didn't you? So, um, oh wow. Yeah, okay. So now, let me see here, guys. Let me make sure you can be able, you can be able to see. Ah, uh, my mug is right over some of those changes. Guys, y'all gotta stop me and say, hey, JT, we can't see. Let me turn this off. You don't need to see me right now. Okay, there we go. All right. So now, I'm gonna come back over here because a second ago I clicked on this, but you couldn't see what I was actually doing. So let's fix that. What I did was. I came over to my curves, I went to my hue, and I clicked on her dress, and it pulled, it placed it right there where where the, that color pinpointed where those pixels are. Now you can make adjustments, like right here, you see how as I begin to add more red, it begins to point to more red on the vector scope. When I pull down, it's, at, it's going back towards the yellow, okay? Um, if I, let's say I come over here, you see how this blue is right here? You see how when I click on this wall, that shows me, it shows me automatically on the curve where I just selected. So I can add more blue, which when I do that, it begins to take you towards what? Green. You see that? Now, if I add, if I begin to pull back, it takes me down here to where the cyan is. If I keep pulling, it'll go down here to where the blue. If I keep pulling now, we're gonna be over here magenta. So, I mean, you get a lot of control. The vector scope is powerful and it allows you to see exactly where you are. You can literally come in here and change your images. So now I'm gonna go ahead and reset that, okay? Um, let's get another one, okay? So this is the one where we did see a nice concentrated area of blue. Let's select this blue and then watch our vector scope. I'm gonna select it there. And so it, it shows me where I just selected. Let's move a little bit and go towards magenta. Wow, look at that. Look at how we just changed that. Hey, this color page is a beast, right? <laughs> Enjoy it, play with it. You see how, okay, so here's another thing I wanna show you. I'm gonna select this blue, right? So you see it, it pinpoints it right here and this is the amount of cyan is gonna is gonna also select this is the amount of blue that it's also gonna select but what if we wanted to get a more concentrated 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 selection move that point in so that way it's not gonna find as many of the other parts of that blue and the same thing for this for this teal fuchsia whatever i mean aqua whatever that is now, it's gonna stay well within this range as opposed to having a, a wider range of blue. And then look at that. 
So it's only making that selection, but look at what it's doing. You see how it's come down to that cyan? If you keep on going, it's gonna get on over there to green. This is how we can use the vector scope. It allows you to see, again, the color. And we're on, that's the hue curve. If we come over to the saturation curve, well now, watch this. We can begin to add more saturation. And as you can see her face, it just really got super saturated, right? We know that that's not the true color of her face, but you can also look on the vector scope and you can see that not only did we get away from the true color of her face, but we also got away from her true skin tone color itself. All right. So as you begin to pull down, it begins to get a little closer, but let's actually use the hue curve to fix that color for her face. All right, it's right there. Let's see. Ah, there you go. There now you see how we've gotten that aligned on the skin on the skin tone line indicator. That's going to give us perfect skin that actually is true to her. That's it. So guys, look. So guys, look. That's the power of the vector scope. That is the power of the vector scope. It's for color and saturation. You can literally use that vector scope to be able to not only pull from colors, but make color adjustments, you know, make things to be the way that you need for them to be. Again, like I said, I don't want you to be intimidated by these. I want to share, now, when I first started, oh, that was super complicated. I was just mimicking what I saw on the screen, honestly. But now it's like, hey, yeah, I can throw that histogram up or that waveform and then come over here into the vector scope and we, I'm like, hey, yeah, let's dance. <laughs> we about to get it in. So, um, you know, you can utilize that, pull some samples. You know, we've done a little bit of masking. We're gonna get deep, deep, deep into it so you can really be in control, but you know, um, throw a power window on a face. And when you do that, remember everything inside the mask, unless you invert it, will be what you're controlling. You can actually use that to see where your hue needs to be and your saturation levels need to be to give you picture perfect skin tones. Okay. So, hey, look, guys, hopefully this video has brought some added value to you and your content creation. If you're new here, please consider subscribing. We'd love to have you as part of the community. And you know what? We're pushing along. The next one, we've got the CIE or chroma, chromaticity uh, scope. If I said it wrong, I'll get it, I'll get it right in the next video. But look, guys, I look forward to seeing you again. I hope you enjoyed this video. Hey, go out there and mess up some stuff because <laughs> that's what we're going to learn. We'll see you in the next one.